no, I was talking about uh, the un unprecedented growth of Reliance and uh, that unprecedented growth happens only because of uh, the vision, ability to do something different which nobody else had done, ability to take the risk, amount of risk as I, I was telling that uh, all the rich people in our making polyester in the country and they, nobody had a plant more than 50, 60 ton per day capacity. When Mr. Amani put up a plant of 500 ton capacity, and uh, there was a prediction in the market that this company will go bankrupt. They cannot survive with such a huge investment which they are trying to do. But uh, but Amani had a different uh, vision and he knew that polyester is a fabric of aspiration. And if you make it to the people at a price they can afford, then whatever growth predictions which are happening today, five seven. 5% oh, in polyester, those will be scrapped and the polyester will grow like any anything because it is an aspired fabric. And that is where they went for a different technology where you can have a scale which was at least five times bigger than the largest plant in the country. The continuous polymerization which nobody had in the country, the raw different raw material which nobody was using in the country, nobody had there because that was not being manufactured in India. It was all required to be imported but they went for that. Then uh, there was a reliability where the, there was a continuous uh, power backup supply, which also no company had in the country. There was a uh, all the instrumentation and uh, power electronics, which was the most modern, were also pretty expensive. Because Dhirubhai always used to ask that uh, whenever any 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 proposal used to go to him, he said, is it the best in the world? He said, don't talk to me about uh, whether it is expensive, cheaper, I don't care about it. If, they, if it is not best in the world, don't come to me. So, so that is where your instrumentation and all other uh, uh, infrastructure which was built, that was at that point of time, whatever was best in the world that had come. And uh, that resulted in company going from uh, uh, starting polyester business in 1982 and by 1997, Reliance became the, the largest polyester manufacturing company in the world. So uh, why I'm telling you on this is because uh, uh, if you work in a company which is static, which is not growing, doesn't have much business and you may be very happy that there is not much job and I can go home at 5 o'clock in the evening, I can take the holidays whenever I want and uh, I get paid my salary. So that's nothing, nothing better than that. But that is where you are killing your career. And uh, uh, and I think I don't know whether I, I will repeat it because I don't know whether you heard about it or not. Because the, the people who, you know, I have been recruiting uh, people in Reliance for from all the premier institutes, including IITs and uh, everywhere else. And uh, around 60% people who left the organization, huh? there was attrition around 50 to 60% attrition used to happen in the company. And the people who left the organization, just a minute, huh? Okay. Am I audible now? Yes, sir. Okay. I think if I put on mute for some reason, then I, 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 I am thrown out of the meeting. I don't know sir, what is wrong with that. But uh, oh, uh, can you hear me now? Huh? Yeah. So, so the whole the message here is the people who have. Uh, maybe 60 70 percent I told about the attrition happening from the reliance. So maybe um, 50 percent of those people may be going for higher studies or management or some other education. But the other large number of people, those who are switching over the job in uh, in India and outside India, majority of them are getting there because of the brand reliance. 
and uh, there is no special training we are not giving any anything very specific uh, or different training the only thing is because the organization is growing so there are performance challenges under which people have to work all the time so whenever you choose your career if the organization is stagnant it's not a growing organization then probably you are not at the right place remember that so i'm not uh, i think uh, we spend enough time on this slide let me go so what are the mega trends happening now when we talk about the opportunity where the world is going you know what is vuca uh, i don't know many of people of you know it this uh, this terminology is being used for last uh, maybe around 7 8 years uh, now and uh, by 2014 15 onwards the terminology of vuca which has become very very uh, popular across the world vuca is a, is a vulnerable is uncertain complex and ambiguous world and especially uh, when i'm talking about i'm talking about the energy uh, industry and, and the large number of chemical engineers they are uh, in the energy sector either it is epc or manufacturing or technology or whatever you talk about it so so in that energy sector uh, so many things are happening today because uh, the global warming you must be hearing about it Some people talk about electric vehicle they said then with no refinery will exist uh, maybe 30 years from now there will not be any fossil fuel will be used everything will be a renewable uh, of the of the different kind of energy they talk about uh, you know plastic getting phased out and having only certain type of plastic being used in the in the, uh, in the world and uh, for the global warming uh, they not allow co2 emissions happening i don't know how you make steel and cement and so many other things where alternate fuels will be required and the research which is going on in in multiple even i worked uh, last 3 4 years of my career in reliance in in a uh, the project called the algae to oil where we where we it was almost 100 million dollar project which i was uh, leading from concept to commercialization uh, concept to implementation for proof of concept where starting from sea water how do you make the oil from the water huh? so normally you explore the oil which is beneath the water here we are trying to convert water into oil by by the medium called algae huh? so then then we say biofuel whether the biofuel will replace the fossil fuel whether wind and solar and uh, all that stuff so that is why it is called the vuca world which nobody knows today and the invest all the investment which are happening in the refinery uh, may I request everybody to be on mute please uh -huh. and uh, and all the all the investment which are happening today they are becoming a very very cautious investment you talk about the refinery the people say no 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 refinery will be built in india now but that is not that is not going to be the right right option for india and that is what i talked it will be about it so so digitization is one of the mega trend and again all the chemical engineers uh, If it is uh, when all digitalization is happening in energy energy sector, those are all uh, led by the by the chemical engineers. They will talk about the drones or robotics or artificial intelligence or smart sensors or the uh, remote uh, sensors, digital twin, and, and many of these areas. So this is uh, none of the domain of other engineers. This become the domain of the chemical engineer when we talk about the. energy sector even uh, you know we had uh, a huge team in the lands which was working under the lands geo and uh, they were the engineers who, who were very good in artificial intelligence and when we try to get couple of our models which were either the reactor models or the furnace model based on artificial intelligence where uh, the only difference was you use the entire data available to you and you develop number of correlations with ai so when when those were done by the people who did not know the technology those models were never successful ultimately we we were required to teach ai to chemical engineers and then when when chemical engineers started using that ai into that then those models become uh, uh, much more effective than the way they were operating before so all the digitalization this is a one mega trend where there are enormous opportunities uh, career opportunity exists so if you think of joining uh, and all these people are there if you talk about uh, uh, mckenzie you talk about accenture you talk about uh, deloitte you talk about kpmg everybody is doing something in that area 
apart from uh, apart from the normal player like Honeywell, Siemens, Hexagon, Aviva, they are all there, and they are all in the hunt of chemical engineers for implementing all these solutions into the, into the chemical industry. So, a large number of people uh, whom I have mentored, they are work. You will find many of them working in each of these companies. Which which I, which I circular economy. Where uh, circular economy means if I generate CO2, I should consume that CO2. So it does, should not remain in the atmosphere. So I, to, I should capture that CO2 and uh, try to get something out of it. So if I make fuel, if I burn fuel and generate CO2, can I go, can I use that CO2 and make the oil again? And that is what I am talking about the algae to oil technology, where, where we take the sunlight and we take the CO2 emitted from the refinery and uh, there is a photosynthesis reaction on which you try to go algae and this algae contains a huge amount of lipid which can be extracted to make the oil again and that oil goes back to the refinery. So that's called the circular economy for fuel which is, uh, the world is talking about because of climate warming. Uh, so you must have heard the colors of hydrogen. It talks about the green hydrogen which is uh, produced from electrolyzers. The world also is talking about the blue hydrogen and this blue hydrogen is nothing but you burn the fossil fuel for making hydrogen or making any other thing and whatever CO2 you have to capture that CO2 and try to use that CO2 for something. Either dump it at the place from where it will not come out, it will not go in atmosphere or use it for making some chemical. So that's a fuel circular economy. There is another, another term called the chemical circular economy which is for the Plastic. If you look at the amount of plastic which have been produced in the world since uh, uh, 19, uh, uh, late 1950s, early 1960s, so estimated, these are around 0.2 billion tons of plastic. Uh, 0.2 billion means uh, 200 crores. Uh, 200 crores tons of plastic which is missing. Hmm? Because uh, the records which is available for uh, this mechanical recycle, record which is available for ground filling, record which is available for incineration. Uh, if you gather all together, there is at least 200 crores tons of plastic which is missing, which has been produced. So where it has gone? So when you see the plastic in seas and rivers and all that area, so that is creating another huge threat for the environment. So the, the entire world is working on the <coughs> recycling of the plastic. We have succeeded 100% in PET, polyethylene terthalate, where all these bottles which you use, there is more than 95% recycling happening in that area. All the uh, polypropylene, polyethylene, where again it can go back and try to make the monomers. So the large number of the people are working on two areas. One is uh, recycling technology, because if, if you look at the science point of view, everything exists. There is no scientific innovation which are required. They do exist. Everything is in the boundary of science if you want to recycle the plastic, pyrolysis, and many other processes. But the challenge is how you economically do it. Because whatever you recycle, can you make the uh, can you make the the top grade plastic back from it, or you make a second grade plastic? From it. So all it lies on the economic on which lots of uh, research are working, and that is another area which is a big big uh, growth area for chemical engineers. So talk about the and then there is another fraternity in uh, many of the. Institute like MCL, I, 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 I do some advising to them myself in the laboratory. So many of them are working on biodegradable plastic now. Alliance is also working on biodegradable plastic where you should be able to degrade the spray. It, uh, nobody knows how many years it takes. It takes thousands of years. Some people say 500 years, some people say 600 years for plastic to degrade. You throw it, but then can you make the plastic which is, uh, we just throw out like a paper and it gets degraded into that. So there, that's another big area where it is working. Now, you, when you talk about this uh, circular economy where I'm talking about a lot of uh, R&D which are happening, then who works in R&D? And most successful r and I have seen where the, the composition of the R&D is around more than 70% chemical engineers and maybe 20 to 30% chemists. If the R&Ds are only dominated by the chemists, it is, there is a very, very little possibility of any R&D producing anything like that. So that is where the huge career opportunities at the the growth of R&D is happening in India and uh, not only the Indian companies, if you look at uh, the large number of uh, companies which are coming in India to set up their shops, there are many in Hyderabad, many in Bangalore, the Shell has uh, 
Now, Shell has the largest oil indicator center in India as compared to their <coughs> Houston and Amsterdam, which were the largest. Now, the India has taken over that. They were the largest one. The Exxon Mobil is coming in. Many, many giant uh, energy players in the world, they are opening up their centers in India, and they all need uh, uh, intelligent people like chemical engineers. Then the de uh, decarbonization, I talked about uh, making uh, blue hydrogen, where you capture the CO2, because uh, it's impossible. They say that you eliminate elim generation of CO2. If you generate, eliminate CO2 generation, then probably you go in the Stone Age. <clears throat> in the Stone Age, also people were emitting CO2 by because they were earning the boot. But if you don't want to, the life of the people, the path, is the living standard of the people in almost two thirds of the world, which is not at par, are not at anywhere close to the developed country. And if that living standard of the people in those countries has to go up, which is uh, every country has an aspiration, whether it is India or Vietnam or China or anywhere, they want their people living standard to be improved. And that living, the living standard has to improve. They have to keep on manufacturing the things if we living time improvement what people will buy more scooter more refrigerator more air conditioner they will build more houses so all that improvement of the living standard that, that all requires plastic that all requires fuel and if that has to grow means the co2 emission has to happen so now the challenge is if you don't want a global warming but you want a growth which is the especially developed countries and country like india then you need to capture this co2 and that is where the again the large number of uh, research and activity every many of the engineers you talked about working in epc the now the large number of epc companies are using their are diversifying their skills to this energy transition which includes your co2 capture which includes hydrogen <coughs> and which includes uh, plastic and, and, and many other areas so, so that is another uh, mega trend uh, where the opportunities are going to exist for many years from now uh, at least if i got a young engineer sitting in this uh, webinar for their entire career, I can assure these opportunities will continue to grow in this area. Mobility revolution, again, uh, this is the, the cafe means it's a corporate average fuel economy, which is the American standard, which has already been implemented in India. And that is pushing all my automobile companies to improve the vehicle efficiency to generate uh, less number of CO2. And another, <coughs> another particular is for the uh, electric vehicle, which is also trying to be used for the minimizing the carbon emission of course the and if you see the life cycle co2 cost of electric vehicle versus the life cycle uh, co2 emission for fossil fuel the delta is uh, not that high huh? not that ever especially country like india where you got a huge amount of vehicular pollution in terms of uh, suspended particle in terms of nox in terms of socks this is certainly extremely good solution for us right? so and then uh, automated vehicle and uh, many other things which are happening and the, and, the, and the last thing is the clean technology scenario, which again gets a huge applicability in the growth of petrochemicals. Today, India makes 24 million tons of petrochemical are produced in India. And the demand which is growing and the imports which are happening in the India, that is uh, projecting the India's requirement of petrochemical to go to 85 million tons from 24 today, which is more than three times of growth in just 10 years from now. The growth is predicted for just 10 years from now. So you see the amount of uh, petrochemical plants and the growth which is required in the country, which is going to happen in 10 years. But again, while doing that, they want to reduce their pollutant. They want to reduce the water consumption because uh, their pretty water uh, resources are going to be scarce in the India. So again, you grow in the petrochemical and end up in many other problems like global warming. So those are again the challenges. The challenges plastic waste collection and reuse and all that stuff. So these are the mega trends, which is digitization, circular economy, decarbonization, and clean technology scenario. And there are huge and huge opportunities for engineers into the area. See the traditional job, like uh, you know, when I started uh, uh, my career in 1979, there were uh, how many six uh, uh, engineers which were recruited in Nedlock. <coughs> Out of which uh, uh, three were from IIT Bombay, two were from uh, UDCP, and I was the only one uh, who was not from Bombay and coming from 
एन आई टी नागपुर दैट टाइम तो वेदर यू कम फ्रॉम आई आई टी वेदर यू कम फ्रॉम मेनी अदर प्लेस इन दो डेज द मोस्ट एस्पायर्ड जॉब वॉज टू स्टार्ट वर्किंग इन द केमिकल प्लांट If it is available in city like uh, major cities like Bombay, everybody was very happy. Otherwise, you have to go to remote places and work into the chemical. That was the only career option, or go to some engineering companies which were uh, partially growing at that time. But the large amount of work here, the shift engineer of a <coughs> Nostil or a Nirlon or maybe RCA for IPCL, yes, that is what he said. Uh, you got a wonderful opportunity. What had happened uh, over a period of time, and if I look at the chemical industry is outside india and the, and the day is not long when it is going to happen in india today if you look at the entire polyester plant of the reliance you will not find a single shift engineer uh, single engineers working in the shift in the polyester plant there is all de engineering which has happened everywhere and that is all happening in many of the other areas also and that is happening on account of growing of a technology so the the amount the manual Activity, which are every company is trying to minimize, because you minimize the manual activity means you minimize the manual errors, and that helps you to save in the reliable operation. And the technologies are developing at such a fast rate, and also available at a such a affordable price that most most companies have started adopting that. So maybe 10, 15 years down the line, uh, if I find the shift job of shift engineer has been eliminated, or especially the engineer working as a shift engineer is eliminated. I will not be surprised into that area. So that is the area where uh, you know it's like a, and when the technology is running the plant, technology is taking care of all worst case scenarios in the plant. Then then you a chemical engineer just become a is the security guard to ensure that things are happening. So those number of positions will definitely it will not get eliminated, but will definitely go down. So that is the area where there are not going to remain any attractive job. So all the attractive jobs will happen in many of this mega ten I am showing where. Some innovative minds are required. So you have to do some things which are not being done traditionally. You know, if you go to a manufacturing plant, you are doing the most of the things which are being done traditionally. So, so those jobs are not going to be very lucrative in the long run. So jobs are not going to be maybe a small and medium scale industry where uh, they don't want to do digitalization. They continue to believe in all kind of manual operations and. Uh, Then the engineers keep on working there, but then they have to ask a question. You have to ask question yourself: Is it a job of engineer which I am doing it? And that is where you will find uh, in most cases the answer no to that. Is it can any science graduate, can any diploma holders, or can any NCTBT uh, experience operator can can he do can he do the job which I am doing today? And you will find most of the answer yes. And if that answer is yes in a technologically advancing plant. And you have to believe that that is not the place you should be spending your career for a long run, right? So, so these are the again the challenges of Buka world. I talk about uh, scenario where if it's a business as usual, if it continues, then the temperature increase is going to four and five, and what is the uh, UOP twenty six, twenty seven? What all they are talking about? One point five desirable temperature for which all these uh, <coughs> uh, mega trends which I talked about are 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 going to be. Very important area. Now let's look at the uh, uh, now about uh, so this when we talk about the Indian economy going to five trillion dollars. So that the mega trends are also part of that. So they are also going to make Indian economy grow in that area. So if you look at our GDP, which is uh, uh, unfortunately dropped in COVID, COVID because there were not many options. But otherwise, we were heading for a. Three trillion dollar economy, which was predicted by 2020, so we almost had reached there by 2019, 2.8 trillion dollar, and then the COVID uh, came out. But I think by uh, 2022 we are going to recover. And if you look at the IMF prediction, which is uh, you know you know what is IMF, I don't need to explain. So by 2026, how many three years from now? 2023 starting now, by 2026 the uh, You are expected to grow to 4.5 trillion dollar economy, which is uh, and India says though we will outsmart the, the prediction, so we'll reach 5 5 trillion dollar even before 2000. What does it mean? What does GDP mean for your career? No, if you look at below, the manufacturing has to add 600 billion dollars of revenue to sustain its current contribution of 26 percent in the 5 trillion dollar GDP scenario. 
सिक्स हंड्रेड ट्रिलियन डॉलर रेवेन्यू में दो मेरी इंडस्ट्रीज है केमिकल एंड इंडस्ट्री रिलेटेड टू द केमिकल विच विल बी अराउंड ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ दैट ऑलमोस्ट सेवन हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी हंड्रेड थर्टी बिलियन डॉलर इन्वेस्टमेंट नेक्स्ट फोर टू फाइव ईयर्स विच इज लाइकली टू कम इन इंडिया And about the GDP, when the GDP grows, of course, the per capita income also grows. You know, in my time, uh, when we started the job, if you look at 1978-79, if you see the growth which has happened till 1990, so there was nothing much change uh, in our lifestyle. You know? When we started the job, it used to take uh, five years of saving to buy a refrigerator. It used to take uh, uh, ten years of saving to buy a scooter, and it used to take lifetime saving to buy a house. Uh, for the people. Uh, Who grew in in that in that regime of 1960 to 1990, if you look at it. But after that, there is a giant leap. The two things which happened: India went globalized in 1991, and uh, second is the IT revolution, where India had lot to contribute. In those two two areas, our GDP started surging. And when the GDP started surging, so just to give, I will not spend much time on this. But uh, when the GDP started surging, just to give you a perspective. That uh, that if you put it in premium, I also started my career with premium company. It can buy five refrigerators in first salary, and we used to take five years to buy one refrigerator. So that's the improvement on the lifestyle. It was was uh, I don't think uh, uh, most of the people who graduated from me had had one plane travel in first fifteen twenty years of their career. Which was uh, uh, which was simply unaffordable. So and because the uh, the world was growing in only indefinite direction, unfortunately there were not manufacturing growth happened in India. There were not many opportunities also existing in India and also also in abroad. But that case is different today because the way GDP is going, it is creating a enormous amount of opportunities for you. And uh, how do you ride on those opportunities? Is again. Uh, Your own uh, personality, your own uh, belief, your own uh, ability to acquire your and your knowledge. So that that's uh, important. So so believe that uh, there is a sea of opportunity which is going to be there for chemical engineers. If you look at this graph, if you look at uh, this uh, world fastest growing economy, which we talk about it, that's true. That is happening today. Around six point seven seven point. This was till two thousand nineteen. It was seven point eight percent growth, which uh, Or sluggish because of uh, COVID, but again uh, we are predicting more than seven percent growth in this financial year. So again, this is source from IM. So, so India means business, huh? and that is where uh, if you see the India's image today and the entire world, which uh, look India with lots of respect only because if they have to grow their economy, they have to do business with India. So they are majority of them. Like if you look at United States or European Union, look at their uh, these graphs there. So they are they are more or less saturated, and uh, for them to grow, the opportunity lies for them in India, and maybe some some in China. But because of geopolitical tension, I think India is becoming more prominent for many of the things which are happening. So, so again, this uh, talk about the India becoming the third the largest uh, economy. Why? Right? 2030, and this can happen if you look at uh, if you are going for 5 trillion in 2025 itself, then definitely. But our challenge is not only the the world largest uh, or the world uh, second third largest economy. We today on the GDP terms, if we rank 8.4 trillion dollars, which is the third largest economy which we are predicting. But if you look at the GDP per capita, India ranks around 145 in the world. And uh, the major challenge for us is to improve the GDP per capita. We don't, and there also we have to do the we have to jump leap and frog. There only we will develop the entire society, and that is evident from this graph. If you look at it, workforce engaged in services is uh, uh, today uh, almost thirty uh, thirty-three percent workforce uh, with per capita income is highest, and they are contributing to fifty-four percent of the economy of the GDP. Industry. As more or less remains stagnant at 25 to 26 percent of the GDP, with uh, 24 percent of our force uh, getting engaged. But the biggest challenge, if you look at below, and that is where that is where the 
huge amount of challenge for India. I think India farm uh, farm wealth has grown. India farming has grown pretty well, and that is probably India lost uh, the industrial revolution because they were busy in farming revolution, which has happened today. Every single uh, farming product we can export today, the amount of uh, productivity what we have, but the farming has grown, but the farmers have not grown. And that was very unfortunate uh, kind of growth has happened in the country. And today, if you look at the workforce, more than 45 or 44 percent of the workforce working in agriculture with minimum income, uh, that just for 41,000 per capita income. And this section of the society, if they have to grow, the only option for India, what they, what every all experts talk about, is to grow in manufacturing. Massive growth in manufacturing, where the at least uh, 20 percent, 20 percent of the agricultural workforce has to move to the manufacturing and that is where the manufacturing has to grow and, then, and those are the opportunities again for you but then I talk about what kind of manufacturing you have seen from the mega train, you have seen from the the other uh, challenges which are happening and technological innovation, digitization, all that top, that top I zone. So that manufacturing with a, a different perspective than what was before that has to grow and that is what all efforts are being happening on India. If you look at the United States of America, where there one percent is a GDP comes from agriculture and only one percent manpower is engaged in agriculture. One percent of the work, uh, working manpower. And more or less a similar case in all developed countries. Even in China for that matter, there's a delta between the GDP coming from uh, agriculture versus the workforce engaged in agriculture that is very low. Maybe it is coming 12 percent, they have got around 14 percent people engaged into that. And then we have to go to that level for entire growth. So, so again, the whole purpose of showing this thing is industrialization. And uh, when we talk about this industrialization, the another challenge comes is all the major manufacturing hubs, which is China, Korea, maybe uh, Thailand, and many other people who have gone for huge industrialization in 1970s. Taiwan and others. And that is time we miss the industrialization. How we'll be able to compete them? But that is where I give the example of uh, Reliance, where Reliance, when they put, decided to put the refinery, very large refinery, which nobody had uh, at that capacity in the world. When they decided to go for refinery, they knew that 100% of the crude oil will be imported. And the size of the refinery was such that uh, uh, that all consumption cannot go in domestic market, it will have to be exported. So you are importing 100% of your crude oil, exporting 70% of your product, and not having your own oil field, not having any gas field, nothing of your own, still making the highest gross refining margin across the world. And so there is something different which is happening there. And that is what different will have to happen in all the manufacturing growth, which is coming in, going to happen in, in, the, in the country tomorrow. And that is all of digitization, automation, and many of the intellectual inputs which will go there. So this I will not spend much time uh, but these are the sectors which are the key available for the for the thing and uh, if you look at uh, infrastructure and supply chain where you got huge amount of opportunity for chemical engineers, improved productive sector, another huge opportunity is happening there and of course uh, I say, as I talk about the R&D where many many of the things are being set up in the country so there are also job skill and experience there are also the opportunities which are going to be built. You know, these are the key enablers means this all level have to grow simultaneously to ensure that our economy grows. So just talking, continuing on the energy world, again I will just briefly tell you, although we talk about a decarbonization, we talk about global warming, but uh, meeting the country's uh, fuel demand and the petrochemical demand, because the petrochemical feedstock comes from the refinery, that part of it, we have no option other than to grow refining. So, Today it is 5.2 million barrel, which will have to grow to 8.5 million barrel. I think I, I had very bluntly talked about this on uh, energy and technology meet, which was uh, which was organized by the Ministry of uh, Petroleum recently, and also in one of another conference. And people said, "Hey, how are you talking about it?" I said, "I cannot run my fuel pumps dry. Otherwise, that will be chaos in the country." So to, to meet the growth of the fuel demand, because the lifestyle of the people are improving. Uh, we will, I, I will have to keep on putting up the more and more refineries. Either I import the petroleum product or I, I, I make myself own. And I, I need to make uh, myself own because I need the feedstock for petrochemical also. Today, 
the best refinery in India and Reliance where 26% of the crude output goes to petrochemical. All other public sectors are below 10%. But the, the future refineries which are being planned where 50% of the refining output will go to the petrochemical. So that both goals will happen simultaneously. And if you look at uh, natural gas, uh, where, where we, we don't make much of the natural gas. So we, our all imports will go on. Our crude imports will continue to grow, refining because of the and if we talk about the ideal situation, which is we are talking about the ideal situation, there also you are seeing 20-30% growth in refinery. Ideal situation means all your solar plants are successful, all your biofuels are successful, all your hydrogen plants are successful, and which definitely cannot happen by in next 15-20 years. It's going to take much longer time. So the the demand in the country of fuel and polymers and all the lifestyle products is going to outsmart the, the innovations happening in the energy transition. So it means that your traditional manufacturing will have to grow in the country. Right? So now coming to, uh, when, when you talk about all this uh, economy, all this energy sector, what all is going to happen, all these mega trends which are going to happen, <clears throat> when it comes to, when you talk about career option, again, I'll not spend much time on that. I already told about, uh, how I became a chemical engineer. So whether you take profession by your choice or not, it's, it's immaterial because what you have is a degree of engineering in your hand now and that is what is going to be your bread and butter for your entire life. And <clears throat> I always say there are uh, very few, very, very few fortunate people in the country uh, or in the world for whom their passion becomes their profession. <laughs> If you talk about uh, Shah Rukh Khan or Sachin Tendulkar or Virat Kohli and all of our uh, people in the sports or uh, entertainment area, their childhood passion has become their profession. But how many of such people are there? Huh? So they, they don't want to work. If somebody tells me, you know, the, 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 uh, Shah Rukh Khan had not slept for three days and he was doing the shooting, then nothing surprises you, right? Because it's, it's, uh, it's passion, is profession, so enjoy what all you're doing. But for all of you, for all of us, your profession has to become your passion. And uh, that, that is the mantra of success. Can you make your profession as your passion? Whatever profession you are in. And if you are able to do that, so that, uh, you know, like uh, Raj Kapoor used to say, you know, I, he, he say, I, I eat cinema, I drink cinema, I sleep cinema, and I live cinema. So nothing, nothing is in my life. Similarly, whatever you do, I say I, I, I do. Uh, so I'm a chemical engineer, and my profession, whatever I am, so I'm doing everything for that. So converting your profession into your passion, and uh, that happens only when you start liking what you do, what you want to do, what you should do, what you should have done. All those things are immaterial. Now, the import, the, the, what, is, what is in your hand is your degree and then the job what you are, you are engaged in. So, can you make that job your, as your passion? And once you do that, then all other things what I am trying, trying to show here, those all will happen. Right? And this is all, this is all about that. All your attitude and integrity and dedication and sense of achievement and all those things happen. You know? I always tell, uh, there is a very old uh, movie, uh, many of you may not have seen that. That movie's name was uh, Trishul. In that uh, movie, that the Sanjeev Kumar, uh, he's a big uh, uh, infrastructure producer, a big builder in the uh, in the city. He has got uh, many plots, and one of his plots, which has been illegally acquired by goons, and uh, with all kind of uh, uh, court battle, he is not able to get the possession of that battle. And one day that uh, a, a man comes from a some village and walks into his office and he says that I want to buy your plot. And uh, then he says, uh, uh, no, I want to buy your plot, but I don't have a single a single paisa in my in my pocket. But I promise you that uh, I will return your entire your plot value in 15 days time. And he get excited. Ki, how how this guy uh, uh, can talk about? He doesn't have any base in the city, he doesn't have any money with him, but he decides to gamble. He said, let's give him and see what happens. 
and that was the the gentleman is Amitabh Bachchan, and you know what all he does, and get the uh, acquire the plot, and then he get the loan, and uh, and he has given a time of fifteen days, but within seven days, you know, within seven days he goes back and uh, try to and uh, goes back with the check uh, to Sanjeev Kumar and says, this is what uh, I told you fifteen days, but I could do it much before. So, and in between the Shashi Kapoor meets him, so he said, fine, uh, it doesn't matter whether I meet your father. I give it to you and he, he walks out of the office. And when Shashi Kapoor goes with the check and he said uh, how he could do that and uh, and how he could uh, return the money in less than 15 days. And that is the time by which I want to communicate to you uh, from this story. Sanjeev Kumar said it's not surprising uh, whether he has brought the money in seven days or whether he could do, we could not do it for many years. The most uh, thing which I have seen in this guy, he knew what he was talking about and he knew he can do it and rest, rest all remained the process after that. So when he came to me, he knew that he can do it. So so all so all this dedication, commitment, as it will always happen, it will be a conviction. He believes that I am a proud chemical engineer and I can, I can create wonders with that thing. Right? So let's move to that. Uh, so you require both the things and uh, I think I'll I, I'll not uh, talk about this again. We are running out of time, and uh, and these are the disruptive technologies. So many times, uh, you know, I was uh, a chief guest in last year in Bharti Vidyapeet for their convocation, and I asked the uh, how many of you about the job. Many people raised the hand. Uh, they were all all branches of engineering. Many people raised the job and uh, raised the hand that we got the job. I said congratulations to you about the job. And I said those who have, uh, and my double congratulation to those people who haven't got the job. For those who got the job now, now they have closed all their options and they are just enjoying the life and looking for a job which they are going to get it. But to those who haven't got, we are going to look for many more opportunities which the people who have got the job are not looking for. And uh, and uh, and I can assure you that many people who haven't got the job, they may get, they may, after a few years they may they will definitely say, oh, it was great. I could not get into that. Uh, uh, I could not got trapped into that job, so I could open up the open up the new opportunity. Huh? The girl who was working with me, uh, <clears throat> she was not selected in uh, Reliance Recruitment, and she went for some other job. And then uh, that company was probably not going good. It was, it was a big, large MNC company, but they were not going good. So they laid off many people. She got laid off, and then uh, then with that experience and again, uh, I could engage her in, in Reliance for some time, Reliance for some other activity. And uh, and then uh, said that you got such a uh, good potential, why don't you look for many opportunities outside? And today that uh, well graduated from IIM Bangalore and uh, has been put in a very lucrative kind of uh, uh, job after her PG diploma into that area. So I think I got many such cases where the people uh, who just believed that they can do something and they, they have succeeded. So these are the areas where there are opportunities. Uh, and uh, you know, there is the Reliance University, we started uh, recently in uh, uh, this uh, place called uh, Ulwe in Navi Mumbai. And they got a plan to open up the very large university in Karzat, where they got some 1200 acres of land. And uh, the plan is to have a university of uh, 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 MIT or some other status, I don't know how much it will succeed. But uh, the first two courses they started there was a uh, data sciences and digital media marketing. So there, there is a huge amount of opportunities exist. If you look at the internet report, and uh, that internet report also talk about uh, many of these technologies. And they say there is a 4.3 trillion dollar economy, which is, which requires almost uh, 12 lakh engineers with the skills which is waiting. They say those skills are not available. And then uh, the economy, which is uh, equivalent to 4.3 trillion, is waiting for those skills to be available from the market. And many of those skills exist. And if you look at your own, you are being a chemical engineer, there is no place huh, in, in all these technologies where you will be denied admission. You can you can learn each and everything which is, which is mentioned in this still disruptive technologies with the knowledge of chemical engineering, what you have. Uh, I had a, another uh, example of a, uh, the girl who was working with uh, Reliant, then went to Engineers India Limited, then she was with DuPont in India, then she got married, 
then moved to us and uh, then the location for dupont job was not very suitable for her she left the job eh? and almost five four five years she was sitting home at idle and uh, then uh, then she always in touch with me said sir what should i do i said why don't you do now it is a covid take the opportunity of that and do some online course on data sciences you are being chemical engineer nobody can do uh, nobody can have a better understanding of data sciences than you do the course on that she did some six month course on data sciences and today uh, with that uh, online course being done just by sitting at home today she is uh, having a job of 100000 dollars in, in, in us uh, working working from home with that uh, her own chemical engineering qualification in data sciences course so uh, i don't have a time otherwise i could elaborate on many of these things but if you look at it uh, uh, renewable energy which is uh, a, a, a straight forward thing where biofuel hydrogen decarbonization all i talked about it they are all happening and you just name any company yeah, any company today of this uh, which is to be considered be management consulting company they are all in this uh, renewable energy something or other being done any r and d is looking into that area and this advanced oil and gas exploratory recovery which i think i talked about the digital revolution huh? again for that all that digital revolution which is not only going to make all this oil and gas industry competitive but it is going to reduce the co2 emission by improving the energy efficiency and that co2 emission they talk about uh, to the tune of uh, several million tons of co2 which is going to be minimized in this oil and gas industry to a number of uh, digital programs which are which are being happening into that area so as i said in the beginning the focus in uh, many current industry and upcoming industry is all large is going to be on uh, uh, use of uh, the newer and newer options of the technology you know when i started my career we used to talk about annual shutdown that annual shutdown kya hota hai saal mein ek bar plan bank karna hai annual shutdown and we are very proud chalo ek bar annual shutdown abhi aa gaya hamara so nobody talks about shutdown today uh, in reliance also the the refinery of gas cracker plant which was commissioned in 2017 going going for the shutdown for the first time in 2023 after five and a half years and what that happened because of all you talk about the robotics and drone and kind of inspection sensors remote monitoring all those existing which is happening shell has opened a, there are many people working there shell has opened a reliability center in chennai today and they are monitoring all shell assets remotely by sitting there and they have minimized the manpower in there जामनगर फैसिलिटी front and if you look at the what you can go on google and search it it will show you there are 4.3 trillion economy for majority of the skills so these are these are the precisely new skill to service the disruption and uh, if you haven't got a good job if you are in a company which is stagnant and not growing please look for many of these qualification so world automation and robotics and ai and blockchain and all that stuff i'm not expert in any of these areas but i know each one has the application in uh, the entire value chain of the oil and gas industry or the energy and the chemical industry which you talking about right so and this i talked about it uh, how many uh, 1300 million tons of co2 i think i just mentioned about it environmental benefit anticipated reduction in co2 1300 million tons plus water saving and all that stuff so this value at stake in on digital transformation in oil and gas and again you look at this high maturity high high certainty quantified digital initiative and technology huh? so these are and each, each one of it there is opportunity for the engineers which is happening huh? so what we talk about the high maturity initiatives and the, the one which are still people are working on it and they are going to come and if you look at the 2.5 trillion dollar economy we talk about it so this is uh, this information is from the white paper by the world economic forum huh? it is available on the google if you go that you will find all the stuff into that so 
So this is a this paper has been published with lots of uh, uh, research and lot of expert inputs uh, which has gone into it. Right? And uh, this is the industry we are talking about. This fourth industrial revolution today. So where these all three are gone now. They all all, all more or less has happened. Maybe the small scale industries or the medium scale industries are still struggling at third revolution, but most of the industries are moving to fourth revolution. We are adopting advanced robotic, AI, IIoT will boost the productivity by 30 percent. They talk about it huh, in that area. So, and uh, this just to tell you, uh, you are living in the world or you are starting your career in the world where innovations happen every day. Uh, telephone took 75 years to reach to the 50 million people. And uh, if you look at it, uh, the Pokemon Go took 19 days uh, to reach to the 50 million people. Facebook took four years, WeChat took one year and uh, and all that. All that. So what was happening in this uh, industry of telephone and uh, uh, whatever ATM, computer and lifestyle related activities, large number of those things are happening also in the in the chemical industry. You know, when I started my career, we used to change the catalyst after it is exhausted. So, we asked the catalyst, how much life is going to be? It will go five years. So, five years after that, we will start thinking and then we used to be very proud. We have been going for six years. But today, what happens? The, the, all the people who are in the catalyst business, manufacturing catalyst, they come out with a new grade of catalyst every year. And they tell you that uh, if you throw out existing catalyst and change the new catalyst, how your quality and productivity will improve. And which pays the cost of the catalyst within less than one year. So my return on investment is less than a year. So why will wait? So there is no catalyst where you wait for exhausting. And that is the power of innovation. And all these innovations are again supported because of the huge amount of disruptions happen into information technology or the technological tools which are available available to you to do the trading. The earlier, if for any product development in the R&D lab used to take 15 years. Now that happens in in, in less than a year or less than a couple of years in that industry. Right? So that is what is happening and uh, I think we are coming to the end of the session. So, so, so this is, uh, uh, many of you are here or you are here. So what I talk about, ki you are experimenting and exploring, you do that. But by the time you reach in your 30s, you must find a career, you may decide where you want to grow, what all exactly you want to do. You cannot keep on experimenting and exploring uh, throughout your year, whether you want to uh, uh, remain a core in the core field. If you want to be a core chemical engineer, then you can definitely maybe, uh, maybe one out of uh, or maybe let's say not, not one, maybe 10 out of uh, 100 engineers who join the manufacturing will go to, will go to the leadership position. What about other 90? All are not going to go to the, to the president level or the head of manufacturing or head of technology. They're only that's a pyramid, only 10 people will grow. What about those 90s into that area? So, so if you think if you have those skills, you've got a leadership skill and uh, you know what all I need to develop in myself to get into the manufacturing leadership. Yes, you continue, but that requires a self-assessment, uh, assessing your ability, opportunity and, on, and all your ambition, which is there. And that is how, by the time you reach your 30s, you might decide what exactly where you want to grow. And if it calls for getting higher extra education, go for it. If you say you want to be in the entirely into the uh, innovation sector, then maybe only single degree in chemical engineering may not be enough. You need to add some qualification into that area. So to the or, or whatever skills I've shown you, there are not uh, too long qualifications are required to acquire those skills in the, and move into that area. You know, I had a, I am Bangalore graduate. He was an engineer from uh, one of the reputed uh, NITs, then he did his uh, I am Bangalore, he was working with me. Uh, and uh, then uh, uh, I used to inspire him to do many new things, but uh, one fine day he said, sir, I want to get into the AI group which company has formed. I said, let me try. So I recommended management, why not to move into AI. He moved to AI group. And then he was working on uh, a model on a furnace on the AI. and. Uh, he did that job reasonably well, but one fine day he came to me and said, sir, I resigned. I said, why you resigned? Where you got a job? You got a such a uh, elite qualification with you. He said, no, no, whatever job I did on uh, that model, which I was working for almost last six months, 
and I realized that my AI skill, which uh, have been imparted to me or I, I have developed myself, are not good enough for me to go in this field. So I'm uh, so I'm spending some 20 lakh rupees from my own pocket and getting admission in uh, one institute in the United States where there is a, a very good AI course uh, uh, of a nine months or a nine months course and three months some uh, practical deputation. So I'm going to do that and then I'll come back to India. So that is a, what I'm trying to tell you. That was the aspiration. Ki, uh, just to uh, understanding ki, this is the area I wish to grow, but then I need additional expertise to grow in this area. And the other guy is doing extremely well. He just went there, spent all his saving, got that qualification, came back, and now uh, probably in, is going uh, lips and bound in the area of, of uh, artificial engineering, the chemical engineer, huh? by the way. So by that time you are fine, then you say, and, and for your generation, huh, one of a couple of my uh, relatives who are graduate from uh, uh, the top IIM, and they tell me that the, the way the technologies are growing, and uh, the way younger and younger manpower is coming with the higher and higher and higher skill, he said by by the age of 45, if I am not in the path of a CEO career. Uh, I may be out of uh, out of uh, job because uh, they, they may not be able to afford me what they want to pay me and the younger people with better skills are available. So, uh, so guy was telling me I, I must earn enough to, you know, say goodbye to the job in my uh, in my late 40s and, and then do something of my own, uh, which may pay me pay me a good amount may not pay me but I but I uh, but I've, I've taken care of my uh, entire life with whatever I'm earning today. So I'm trying to, so so you start in your 40s, you should be able to build your career by that time. Right? By the time you get into this area, you should be, for especially for your generation, in your 50s, you should not be working for earning your bread. You should be working only to enjoy the career. And that is uh, uh, where this third, quad, third quadrant, what I'm showing, become the most critical and uh, they can do it if you have really found what you want to do in, in your 30s area. So, so I think uh, that's for me and that uh, I like this uh, uh, APJ Abdul Kalam's quote, he said, I am the best, I can do it. God is always with me and my winner today is my day. And just believe me, uh, in Mukesh Ambani's 50th birthday, which was celebrated in 2007 in uh, the Jamnagar site of Reliance, and I was fortunate uh, enough to be invited for that. And uh, it was a very close family affair, not many, and very, very few employees, uh, uh, senior employees, which were invited there. And uh, that is the first time I had uh, heard uh, his mother talking about. Uh, we had never heard about, uh, and she spoke in Gujarati. After spending a lot of years in Gujarat, I was able to at least understand what she was talking about. And then she said, uh, my contribution to the business, uh, uh, two things. He said, uh, I used to see uh, Mukesh in stress, uh, Dhirubhai in stress, uh, what they all were talking, discussing and uh, fighting and, uh, you know, I, I was uh, never able to understand much about it. But I used to tell two things to them. Okay, whenever they are unhappy or they are uh, in, in stress, I used to tell them okay, everything happens for good. Hmm? So, bhi hota hai, ke liye hota hai. So, you have to believe in that. They said, uh, uh, God is always with me. Jo bhi hota hai, ke liye hota hai. Aur jo Tumhara marji se nahi hota hai, wo uske upar wale ki marji se hota hai. So, accept it and move on. Huh? So, so, that is what uh, uh, gives you confidence, gives you the conviction, saying that thing, uh, if I have been rejected in some job, there is something better for me. Believe in it that uh, 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 jo bhi hota hai, achche ke liye hota hai, jo meri marji se nahi hota hai, it happens with the God, which he has got made a thing for me in life. And that is what we say, God, because all the bills in my day. And this is what I'm not very, uh, not very politically fan of anybody, but then uh, what he says, India is full of energy and the energy future is bright. And although we talk about, we have no source of energy, but still we say energy future is bright because our people are energetic. So I think, uh, so thank you very much. Uh, I think it is already, we have some technical glitch. I hope, uh, it's a brief session. This session, when I used to take for young engineers in Alliance, it used to be a, a six-hour session, which I'm trying to conclude in one and a half hours for you. But uh, I, I hope there is some some there is some takeaway for you from this session. So, so 
Thank you very much, and uh, I hope uh, you will love this. We can quickly take few questions because we are already out of time. You can always get in touch with me on many of these uh, social media's uh, uh, platforms which I have shown you. Let me stop sharing the presentation and uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. It was a wonderful presentation and thank you for enlightening us. Uh, so, as you have already said that you will entertain few questions, I will request everyone to ask one by one or uh, if you have any questions, uh, you may drop them in chat box. Thank you. Uh, hello, sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, sir, like what five minutes, and then later on, uh, maybe you can ask me later. Yeah, please go ahead. Yes, sir, what is the scope of uh, designing in uh, uh, chemical engineering? That is process equipment design or uh, uh, etc. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, you heard me right when I said uh, we need uh, more than 70% chemical engineers in R&D and uh, maybe 25-30% of chemists. So whatever is built into the lab, the, the, the toughest job for uh, any R&D to succeed and that is where the huge amount of skills are lacking in India is a, is a scale up. So from the laboratory, if the scientist proves that I can mix this uh, two component, make some innovative product. Now, how do you design the reactor? Whether you want a CSR, CSTR, whether you want a upflow reactor, downflow reactor, horizontal, and all kinds of things. So from there it starts, the skill building the uh, entire design basis for the basic design is different, uh, design basis I'm talking about, building the design basis for that plant and that is the, that is where the, the smartest chemical engineers are required to work, you know. Today the most expensive chemical engineer in the world is guy who can design the reactor, who can uh, build the reactor and design, uh, not un, uh, design the reactor means uh, decide what kind of reactor is required for this position and then went on designing the reactor. So, all the uh, areas where uh, the innovative things are happening in the country and where R&Ds are growing, so huge amount of opportunity and each, any R&D you go in the country, there is huge amount of lack of skill for the people who can, who are good in process design. Huh? So there are uh, huge opportunities in that area. And then you work for your lifetime if you become expert in that area. Uh, so, sir, would you recommend uh, an undergrad to uh, to be to get directly in designing, or first of all, he, he need to experience certain? Uh, no, they skin. can directly directly get into process design because uh, they don't need a PhD or MTech into that area. Not not necessarily required. So, okay. Okay, right thanks. engineers, they can they can they can just do that because it is uh, see models. You can start using it after some basic design basis has been finalized. Design uh, yes. and basic design. These are two major areas. EPC is not that difficult. EPC is a much easier job because uh, if I, I, uh, with due regards to many of you who are working there, if I ask you to perform the calculation which are done by the software yourself, not many people are able to do it today. Yes, it proves. Uh, Uh, so there are a couple of and, uh, yeah yeah quickly we can take of course I got some other engagement. Uh, uh. Uh, so uh, there are a few questions in the uh, chat box uh, related to whether Reliance is uh, uh, providing any long term internship to undergrad students. Long term? Uh, internship. Uh, internship to undergrad students. See Reliance, what they are doing is they go to every campus wherever they are going for recruitment. In most of those campuses, see, today they recruit 600 engineers. So nowadays, almost uh, half of them, hmm, half of them are coming, uh, uh, half or maybe 40% of them are coming through the uh, apprentice this internship program. So they are going and recruiting the engineers in third year engineering, those who have passed out. They come, uh, they work on the project, their guide has been assigned to them. They are paid a handsome uh, stipend also into that area. And then uh, those are those engineers after completing their project, they are evaluated and those have been recommended for recruitment. They are given the job offers uh, even before the campus interviews are started, but they are not taking uh, uh, by other route, but this route only through the campus. Uh, yes, 
Okay, sir. Thank you for your guidance. Uh, so I already have uh, defined uh, uh, programs. Uh, we would entertain other questions through our mail ID, which is mentioned in the chat box. Yeah. Uh, so good morning, one and all present here. Uh, Honorable Chief Guest, Mr. Vinayak Marathe, sir. Respected and all participants, it is such an honor for me to get this opportunity to thank you all. On the behalf of uh, Beginnings Organization and ROH Engineering Solutions, I extend my gratitude to all the participants, guest speaker, and all the esteemed delegates for their presence and uh, contribution to make this webinar a success. Uh, thank you, sir, for taking out uh, time from your busy schedule to grace this event and adding value to everyone's time. And uh, thank you for giving valuable insights and encouraging young generation of chemical engineers to take up the challenges. Uh, last but not the least, I must thank uh, our team uh, live of this webinar series and uh, which is tirelessly working on making this hustle free experience for all of us to end, uh, ensure this is uh, reaching to maximum audience. Uh, I also regret uh, the glitch we faced uh, in the initial few minutes. Uh, but I congratulate the participants for their active participation and uh, patience. And uh, thank you, everyone. One last time for the day until we meet again. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. So maybe if you can get in touch with me for any guidance. I cannot assure you of giving you a job, but I can definitely guide you to get a right job. Hmm? So thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone.